Well, hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dwayne Butcher of Lean Frontiers, and I'm calling in from my home office in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I am joined uh, by our presenter, Patrick Graup, who is calling in from San Diego. Just two very quick points of logistics uh, before we get started. First, today's short presentation is being recorded. You'll get an email shortly after our session ends with a link to the recording. And please do share this with others in your organization. Due to the short nature of our webinar, we will not be fielding questions. However, if you do have questions, our presenter would be happy to field those uh, directly. So let me turn now to our presenter, Patrick Grout. Patrick is Principal, Vice President, and Senior Master Trainer of the TWI Institute. He is certainly one of the world's most experienced and knowledgeable TWI trainers, having learned TWI during his time at Sanyo uh, in Japan in the uh, 1980s. He's also author of several award-winning books, most recent being Creating an Effective Management System, Integrating Policy Deployment, TWI and Kata. So for now, Patrick, I'll go ahead and turn things over to you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dwayne, and uh, thank you all for joining the presentation. Um, it's my pleasure to be with you today, although I must say uh, it's under, uh, sad to say that it's under such difficult circumstances uh, with the uh, spread of the um, coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, and the pandemic, and of course, that's the topic of our short presentation today. You know, how can TWI uh, help uh, to respond to some of the, the, the urgent needs that we have um, uh, today? So let me just uh, join, uh, start by saying that uh, TWI, I think, is just uniquely uh, designed and built, you know, for uh, the conditions that we have today, because in fact, it was developed uh, during war conditions, during World War II. You know, during World War II uh, on the home front, we turned our manufacturers into um, builders of uh, quickly, they quickly ramped up into builders of war material. So you had companies like Ford and uh, Chevy, Chevrolet GM, uh, instead of making cars, they turned their factories into making tanks and even airplanes. And so we're seeing those same conditions today uh, when companies are being asked to change over their production, you know, to, to, to produce things like um, ventilators instead of uh, cars. And uh, more than that, though, um, uh, uh, TWI was designed to, to help replace a workforce. You know, many of the workers, many, maybe most of the workers, uh, you know, during World War II went off to fight the war. And so uh, they had to be replaced, uh, you know, by inexperienced people. Of course, many times uh, women coming into the workforce uh, for the first time. And so TWI was specifically designed uh, to help, you know, to, to meet those, uh, to meet that demand. And uh, so that's why TWI, and I want to kind of stress that as we go through our presentation today, you know, TWI really has a people focus. Uh, it did in World War II and it does today as we teach TWI. Um, even though we're going to be talking about jobs and specific technical aspects of doing things, um, the focus, the real focus of TWI is on the people and how could we bring Rosie, you know, into the workforce and uh, quickly get up to speed, you know, in, um, uh, doing the new work that she was being asked to do. And as it turns out, even during the war, um, we also had problems uh, with uh, nursing shortages and replacement of staff. Um, and so um, you can take a look at some of the comments here. If you, the only thing I want to notice, want you to notice on this page is that uh, if you look at the date, this is from 1945, and you'll see that the, the problems that they had during World War II in terms of replacing staff and trying to bring in auxiliary staff, um, you know, um, volunteers and retired uh, nurses and physicians and bringing them back up to speed is really the challenge that we're facing today. Uh, and you can see uh, even today, you know, we have um, um, shortages of uh, nurses who are being taken out uh, because they're getting sick or um, because the, um, um, the, um, uh, the patient population is going up so quickly. Well, how did they do that? So let's take a look. Um, um, how, how did they actually uh, achieve, you know, that result? You know, one of the core concepts of, of TWI is, is what they call the multiplier effect. Um, TWI was designed so that it could be quickly spread 
um, to the workforce throughout the country. And that's what makes it so uniquely applicable, you know, in today's environment. You know, we have um, uh, uh, needs to train people um, and get people trained uh, very quickly. And the way TWI does that is by creating a standard, uh, standard delivery approach. And that's what I do as a master trainer. I teach people how, you know, to teach uh, the method. And then those people then can go into their organizations as facilitators and train people on how to do these skills. And of course, you know, then those folks can then go out and actually train jobs to the, to the people in, um, who need them. And so when you, when you hear things like, um, oh, we don't have time to train or nurses are too busy to train, you know, what we need to do is, is to create a small army of people who are skilled in those uh, uh, in skilled in the TWI skills so that they can actually perform you know, that effective relationship building and uh, training that people need. And that can be done uh, fairly quickly. And the way we do that in TWI, I know many of you are familiar with TWI, so you know these programs, but for those who aren't, um, the, the core of the TWI is what we call the four-step methods. Um, so each uh, program, like uh, how to instruct and how to build relationships, how to improve methods, you know, is founded on a four-step method that can be practiced and, and, and learned um, fairly uh, quickly. You know, if we have a four-step method, it's a skill that people can practice and practice, and then that's how they're able then to quickly learn the skills and deliver them. Um, let me just, I don't have time today, we don't have time today to uh, go into all of the details, but let me just kind of focus on some of the points that, that helped make TWI um, such a success during the war and, and can help us today. Um, this is the job instruction component that we'll look at today. And what you'll notice here in the card in steps two and three is that that emphasis on repetition. And so in the methodology, we, when we're teaching a job you know, to a new person, we have them, we present it to them in step number two, we do it again and again and again, each time you know, feathering in more information um, so that the the person can build on their knowledge, you know, step by step without being overloaded by too much information and getting confused. And then in step three, we actually have them do it. And again, we have them do the job again, do the job again, do the job again. So that, uh, um, you know, by the end of the, the, the short training uh, period, then they're able to um, actually experience the job, you know, many times over and over again as they learn and uh, uh, practice. Now, one of the other secrets um, to TWI is TWI emphasizes why, why we do it that way. So we break down the job into the, what we call the important steps, the what to do, that's the procedure, and then the how to do it, you know, the, 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 the techniques and the skills and the knacks and tricks of how to get it done. And most importantly, then we tell them why we do it that way. You know, when people understand why they have to do something, that's how they remember it. That's how they lock it in. Here's an example. Um, this is an example of uh, washing your hands. And, uh, you know, when we learn with uh, posters or watching videos and so on, as you see on the right, that's the World Health Organization poster that which we follow. Um, it doesn't really tell them why they have to do it that way. And so in the training courses, you can see, for example, in step number one, when we wet our hands, the key point is without soap. And if we know that, if we know the reason why, you know, a lot of people like to put soap on first and they think that's more efficient and faster. But actually, the reason is if you put the soap on first, if you put the soap on your hands first, the water will wash away that soap. And so you lose most of the soap that you're trying to get your hands clean with. On the other hand, when you put the soap on your hand first, when water comes into contact with the soap, the soap naturally lathers, and then you get the full effect uh, of the soap. Um, if you look at step number four, uh, that first key point, interlocking, you know, we want the people to interlock their fingers because most people don't realize if they're just rubbing their hands, you know, even if you sing happy birthday twice, if you're just rubbing your hands, you're gonna miss all the germs that go on the insides of your fingers. And if you interlock your fingers, you can clean all of your fingers at one time. The thumbs, look at key point number four, using your thumbs. You know, I've taught this uh, job to doctors. Uh, I even was watching uh, Anderson Cooper, uh, one of the CNN anchors, the, he was uh, on the air the other night and he watched a a video of uh, washing hands and he says, oh, I didn't realize you had to, to wash your thumbs. And so most people don't realize that, that they're missing. And the reason is the most active part of your hand. And then finally, um, just take a look at that last key point there in step five. Um, sorry, let me turn that off. Um, uh, in step number five, 
you know, when you use your towel to turn off the water, keep in mind that um, there may be germs on the, um, the, the sink or on the faucet that you've touched. And now if you've touched that, that faucet again, you've recontaminated your clean hands. So you can see that when, by having these reasons, by having these reasons, you'll be able to remember, you know, what those key points are and then do them each and every time. So now let's get into our topic for today. You know, as, as you can see, uh, this is an old graph, but um, we certainly can see uh, the, the rapid rise of the coronavirus. And that's what makes this uh, so compelling uh, for all of us. And uh, um, let's take a look at how TWI, you know, can be applied directly, you know, to um, this pandemic. If you look at these pictures, what do you notice uh, in common um, of all these are all pictures I picked up off the web last night. Um, and uh, um, anyway, if you're give you a moment to think about that, but I think what you can notice if you look at all these pictures is that they're all wearing PPE or protective uh, personal protective equipment. Um, they're trying to keep uh, the virus off of their body so that they can stay safe. And indeed, what we've learned is one of the most compelling and important uh, problems that we're facing right now is that our healthcare workers are becoming sick uh, because they come in contact with the virus. So how can they protect themselves uh, from getting the virus? Um, you can see various scenes here. Um, I'm a little bit, I'm a little worried about the, the woman in the center picture there who's leaning into the car. I don't know if she hasn't put on her gown correctly or if it's the wrong size, um, but it doesn't look too safe to me. But the question then becomes, you know, are people properly trained in putting on and taking off uh, PPE. Um, you know, just looking at a few uh, pictures doesn't always, uh, you know, give us the correct uh, answer or the correct response. Um, in fact, you know, last just last week, uh, one of our nurse trainers, Ginger uh, Purvis, was in uh, Detroit. Uh, we're doing some training there at the VA hospital, and she was asked uh, uh, to help uh, some of the training uh, staff who what they were going to do was to go out and audit uh, all of the staff in the hospital to see if they were using their PPE properly. And they had, now this, I, this uh, standard precautions, I just pulled that down off the web, but uh, Ginger was telling me that they had about a five or six, four or five or six page, you know, very detailed SOPs, standard operating procedures on how uh, to put that together, but they, it was overwhelming with uh, too much information. They really didn't know how, well, they knew how they were gonna go and audit it, but they weren't sure that they were gonna be able to cover all of the critical aspects. And so they asked us for help. What Ginger did was she, she took a few hours with them and broke down, they followed their SOPs, they broke them down uh, into our format, which you can see, these are the actual SOPs that Ginger sent me. And they outlined those important steps, key points uh, that, the, that the auditors needed to be looking for so that they could be sure uh, that they were um, uh, seeing the correct procedure being done. And as you can tell, you know, moving from SOPs to JIVs, job instruction breakdowns, you know, it makes it much more clearly uh, what they need to do and how they need to do it. And so, um, in fact, uh, at the end of the week, they asked us, well, could we use these job instruction breakdown sheets to train if we find people who are not uh, using the method properly? And of course, the answer was a resounding, yes, we can do that. And so um, uh, next week, uh, the uh, hospital asked us to come back and then train those nurses on how to teach uh, using the JI instruction method. So they're going to be instructing uh, people there in Detroit, uh, the healthcare workers in Detroit, uh, how to um, properly put on the uh, PPE. So let's take a look at that and uh, give you a little bit uh, better feel for how we do um, job instruction. You know, how can we train better? Um, what are the things that we can do um, to train better? So this is an old picture from a, one of our early uh, classes at Virginia Mason on how to put on um, PPE. And I'm gonna uh, take, take you through that and show you a demonstration, a little bit of a demonstration. So, so this is the more detailed uh, breakdown sheet. Now there are two, there are two um, uh, facets of PPE. One of course is putting on the PPE or donning the PPE. And uh, we have a separate breakdown for that. And, and that, from my understanding, that typically goes pretty well. Uh, people uh, understand the key points on how to do that. It's when we remove or doffing the PPE, when we remove the PPE, that's where 
problems happen because that's where our PPE now, you know, is soiled. It's got contaminants, it's got bacteria, it's got virus uh, and, and getting it off properly is where things go wrong and where um, uh, healthcare workers can get infection. So let's take a couple look at these things. Uh, a couple, let's take a look at a couple of these uh, pointers and I'll do, uh, I'll try to demonstrate how the TWI method works you know, so that um, we can uh, give proper training uh, to our healthcare workers. So you notice uh, in, these, in the first um, important step, it says unfasten the gown. You know, typically a gown, when you put on that gown, um, and there are many different styles, uh, some you just lift over your head, but they'll typically have um, a waist strap that you tie at your waist and then one at the neck or something that you pull over your head. And so the key point here, and here's the trick, you know, what we're, what we're looking for in key points are things that you know, we say, um, you know, a little trick or knack that will help that makes or breaks the job or that gives a, some special information or a, 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 a tip, you know, that uh, uh, people can use so that they do it correctly. You know, like we said earlier, the important steps are the what you do. That's the procedural things. And that, that sets up that standard procedure so that you have a sequence. And if we follow that sequence each and every time, will be sure to remember how to do it correctly and without missing anything or forgetting anything. But the key points, that's the critical aspect, the key points are how we do it, the way we do each of those. And then of course, when we attach, as we said, the reason for that key point, why we do it that way, then that makes up the complete um, uh, content of the training. So in that first important step, the key point is do your waist first and then your neck, because then I end with my hands at my neck ready to remove the gown because as you can see in the second important step when we remove the ground we want to pull it forward from our neck and away from our body so that in other words we want to keep all of the contaminants falling to the floor and then we're going to pull things inside out removing our gloves at the same time and then folding and rolling the gown um, together now i know what one of the things that we find you know when we uh talk about the breakdown, when we teach this breakdown, it's both what the learner sees and hears that makes up the content of the training. And so how do we keep things simple? We keep the simple words that they can remember, but it's also the demonstration that shows them how to do that. So I'm gonna, just reading those words probably doesn't give you a good uh, image of what's happening. So I'm gonna demonstrate that to you if I could. Um, Actually, this is not a, a gown. I bought this at Home Depot. Um, it's just a painter's gown, but it kind of simulates uh, what uh, it simulates what a gown looks like in the hospital. So it goes, kind of goes on something like this. Okay. Now, actually, there are two different kinds of gloves. Um, you know, and I'll show you both. Uh, if you were just wearing these, um, you know, kind of medical examination gloves. Um, I mean, you could have a whole breakdown on how to take off gloves, but let me just point out a couple things for you, since this is a very common thing that many of you wear, maybe you're wearing them to the uh, supermarket. Um, but when you're removing these simple examination gloves, you know, remember the surfaces of the gloves are now dirty, the front and the sleeves of the gown are also dirty or soiled. And then just imagine I have a mask on. So. Um, I still have my mask and, and uh, face cover on. But when you're removing simple gloves like this, the key point then would be to pinch it and to roll it inside out. Because now you see all the contaminants are contained on the inside of the glove and I won't be able to, I won't uh, take the risk of touching them with my clean hand. But now to get the other glove off, I'm just gonna slip my finger underneath the glove on the clean side and again, roll that inside out. And so now, I've got the inside out, all of the germs are contained as the reason for the key point and we can throw those away. Now, let me show you the breakdown that we're working on um, for the coronavirus or COVID-19. We're gonna gown up a little bit more um, uh, severely, I should say. So these are more of a uh, surgical gloves. So now we're not, we're not covering the breakdown on putting on the gloves, but if you are putting on the gloves, the key point would be you know, to wrap the gloves and cover over the gown so that you make a, a, a seal. So let me just get set up and then I could show you how then we can take them off, which is the, the, work, the job that we're working on now. 
So again, I'm going to fold these the edges of the gloves up and over my gown. So in our breakdown that I was just showing you, um, remember we said the key point was to start at the top, at the neck, and we want to remove the gown forward and away from our body so that any debris or bacteria or germs is moving away from our body and falling to the floor and not on us. And then, um, remember the second, when we're removing the gown, remember we said we're going to pull the sleeves inside out, again, or outside in, depending on how you look at it, because we want to keep all of, remember the, the sleeves and the outside of the gown have debris on them. We want to keep all of those inside and away from us. And then here's the trick. We can remove, since the gloves are tied over the gown, we can remove our gloves at the same time as we remove the sleeve, all in one shot. And then we're going to roll this. Remember, the inside of the gown is clean. So I'm going to roll these over, containing all of the dirty contaminants. I'm going to pull this sleeve inside out. So again, that was our key point, inside out. And I'm going to remove the glove in one shot. And so now I'm clean. Remember, all of this is the inside. Everything is inside out. So everything is on the clean side. And then the third key point, or the fourth key point, was to roll it up into a bundle. I'm, only touching the clean side. The outside is all contained on the inside. I rolled it up and now it's very easy for me uh, to dispose of. And so let's go back to our um, breakdown. So now you can see um, those were the, the when, when the learner actually sees and hears what is on the breakdown sheet, it's both what they see, the demonstration, as well as what they hear that makes up the full of the uh, training. Now let's take a look at uh, steps three and four, removing of the shield and removing of the face mask. Now here, I'll show you some pictures here. The key points here are to lean forward. And this is one of the key points that, you know, I've looked at a lot of the YouTube videos on how to remove um, PPE. I see people doing that, but I never hear them point that out to the learners. If you lean forward, then again, the germs are falling down uh, to the floor making sure not to touch the mask or the shield. And then we're going to release the straps from the back to the front. You know, without that key point, what many people do, you know, is they'll take, I don't know if you can see my, my video, but you know, this is just a stress mask. But what typical people try to do is they'll grab the mask and pull it off over their head. And now all of the debris and germs are falling on my face. So what I want to do is to start not touching the mask, start from the back, and if your if your um, N95 mask has two straps, you want to do the lower strap first, pull it up over your head, and then keeping the mask away uh, from your face. So by pointing out these 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 key points, those critical aspects, and then explaining to people why we have to do it that way, then they can be conscientious of how they um, uh, remove their PPE and then they can stay safe. Now, finally, step number five is washing your hands. And the key point is to use the correct procedure. Um, I don't have time to show you that today. I would really love to. But if you go to our website, uh, we have a page um, called infectionprotection.twi-institute.com. If you go there, you can see a full video of me teaching my daughter how to wash her hands uh, correctly. OK, so I hope that. Uh, um, what we've done so far is we've we've tried to, to, in a very short period of time, demonstrate to you some of the critical aspects of TWI and how TWI, you know, was able to address uh, the wartime uh, situation. That's where it was developed in terms of training and filling in people to to be motivated and to learn new jobs. And, uh, you know, I've heard this many, many times over the last few weeks uh, uh, with the COVID-19. We're fighting a war against this pandemic much as we did in World War II. And so the response to World War II with TWI, you know, can have the same types of good results that we had uh, uh, in the, in, during World War II. We can have those same results today. Um, these are just some of the results that uh, we've been getting over the last many years uh, working with TWI in healthcare. I mean, in particular, if you look at that 50% reduction in infections, you can see how um, vital and how uh, um, the ability of TWI you know, to address uh, the, the issues that we're facing, you know, with the uh, pandemic. Um, 
in particular, there are many areas where uh, you know we feel uh, TWI can have an immediate effect. Um, now we've already talked about hand washing today and also PPE protective, uh, uh, personal protective equipment. But in other areas, for example, testing, you know, we're ramping up testing. Um, I know uh, some of our trainers uh, um, in Mississippi, uh, in the Memphis area are using TWI to teach their uh, staff how to do the testing for the coronavirus. So that's happening now. Um, but also um, we have things like ventilators and respirators um, that are kind of the focus of, 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 of the pandemic. Um, you know, today, um, someone, a doctor told me that only respiratory therapists are allowed uh, to put on a ventilator to a patient. But as the patient population increases and as we bring in more ventilators, I, obviously, we're not going to have enough respiratory therapists. We're going to have to train other people to do just those aspects of the job. But other things as well as putting on IVs and infection, you know, uh, control and so on. So um, let me just uh, wrap up by saying thank you all um, for your attention. Um, I know this is a very uh, important topic. Um, and uh, let me just uh, finish by reiterating how, um, even though we've talked about the specifics you know, of jobs and how jobs are done, the technical details, you know, I wish I had more time you know, to tell you about the people element of TWI and how TWI works with people in terms of getting their motivation, and getting their buy-in and getting their, you know, cooperation and doing the work, you know, that standard way. But maybe we'll have the chance to do that at some other time. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, certainly look forward to hearing them. And I'll I'll get back to you with answers. So with that, Dwayne, I think I'll wrap up my hey, comments for. Patrick, I don't know if you heard me there, but your video had frozen up and you had cut out for a while. That's why I came in and was uh, was addressing the the audience. So I don't know if you heard that you would stop broadcasting oh, there. That during the, okay, well, I'm sorry about that. No, that, that's all right. So uh, you and I can talk uh, offline later and talk about if we need to redo that part of the, the presentation or perhaps re-record uh, the entire thing for the, for the audience. But okay. nonetheless, thank you very much for, uh, for sharing your expertise. Um, I also uh, just want to let you know that this uh, presentation that Patrick is doing as part of Lean Frontiers, what we're calling a, a rapid response webinar series uh, to provide some practical information for really where the world is, is and what we're facing right now. Um, so we are scheduling another 10 to 12 uh, very specific, unique uh, responses to the situations that individuals and companies are facing right now. You can learn more about those as uh, we begin to populate the web page uh, by visiting leanfrontiers.com slash online. Uh, so to all those who are watching and listening, uh, thank you for your time. Until we gather again, stay well, stay encouraged, and go do good things. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you.